Hey everyone, how's it going? Here today with a video showing you some hidden features in iOS 7. Now, if you're not sure, iOS 7 was released in beta form earlier this week at WWDC 2013. They previewed a bunch of features on stage, but I'm here today to show you some things that you may have missed, may not know about, and definitely were not shown to the public on stage. Some of them cool, some just a little tweaks here and there, and some I might not even show you. So go ahead and feel free to leave your comments down below if you notice something that I didn't place in this video, but here's the ones that I like the most. To kick it off, the first one is in fact Spotlight Search. If you're running iOS 7, you may notice that there is in fact no Spotlight Search if you swipe here to the left. The quick fix for this is simply drag down from any of your springboard screens and there you go. You have Spotlight Search just in iOS 6, iOS 5, and there it is. I'm not sure if I like this yet. I think it's more clean that it's not there on the left because that was a little bit buggy, but sometimes you may accidentally drag this down, but that's how you access Spotlight Search, and surprisingly, not that many people know it. It's not as intuitive as it was before. The next one isn't so much a hidden feature, but just something cool that many people don't know about. By default, the wallpapers are not set to dynamic, but if you go into wallpapers and brightness now, there are now two moving or dynamic, as Apple calls them, wallpapers to choose from. Much like Android Jelly Bean, as you see here, we have the bubbles. You can go ahead and set these as either one of your wallpapers, and they are live wallpapers. Again, it's about due time that these came around to iOS 7, but you can go ahead and set them, and also you can shift your apps, and it's hard to see here, but your apps will even move on top of the dynamic wallpapers themselves. So it's dynamic wallpapers, and again, they're not set by default, so many people don't even know that they're there. Now this next feature is by far my favorite of all of them I'm about to show you. So if you're like me and you're someone who does like to take panorama photos on your iPhone 5, I have a couple of them here. This one is of the Hoover Dam in Las Vegas, Nevada. And I'm going to go ahead and show this to you. I set this as my lock screen. And now when you quit out and go to your lock screen, you can do this really, really cool feature. So here's the panorama photo and there's my lock screen. It reacts to your movement and you can look at the whole thing up, down, left, right. This is by far one of the coolest things. It's actually hard to figure out if you don't know. You, If you set it as a panorama photo, no need to crop it. You can set it as this and access that awesome feature. Now this is one of the highly toted features, but they didn't show it off much, nor is it hard, easy to find. What it is, is blocking of contacts on your phone. So you have to go into your messages first. I'm just covering up my numbers here. And if you scroll to the very bottom, you see here you have the option of blocked contacts. If you go ahead and click this, you can choose any number from your contacts, or you can add one that will, you, they will not let come to your phone calls, messages, or FaceTime. It won't show up on your phone. This is a really nice feature along the way, and I'm glad it's here. Now this one also not as big but very handy at that. If you go all the way to the bottom of your notification center settings, you see you have these government alerts which by default are set to off. They're kind of cool though. If you turn on amber alerts and emergency alerts, it will place uh, government alerts in your notification center if there's ever something going on which they need to alert you. A really handy feature. I like that Apple's done this and if you flip those on, kind of a nice hidden feature. This next one is also really cool and it's been long requested and what it is, is live zooming while filming a video. So as you see here, I've started to record a video and I can zoom in and out while I'm actually recording. In the past, what you had to do was zoom into your preferred distance, then shoot the video and record it at one stable point. Now you can zoom in and out live as you're recording video. And in all honesty, the degradation of quality is not that bad. The zoom is about two to three times, not as much as a full camera zoom, but the quality is really not that terrible for how much of a zoom you get. A nice handy feature. This next thing isn't so much a feature as it is just a little extra Easter egg, but if you take a close look on the clock icon on the springboard, you will notice that it is now live and it is updated with the current time, even with the second hand. If you're familiar with jailbreaking and all this is one of the very popular tweaks called Live Clock, they've now just implemented this into iOS 7. It's just a nice little fun handy thing to have there, the clock that updates itself. The next two features I'm about to show you are things Apple implemented. They're going to kill off a lot of applications. The first one is the implementation of a QR code scanner right into Passbook. So anyone who uses red laser apps of the like, basically those now become useless as the QR code is a stock app or stock feature right on your device. You can go ahead and scan it and import it into your Passbook. Also, as you see here, we now can go into our compass and we actually have a live level. So anything like iHandy level or apps like that are now also rendered somewhat useless. You place it flat on the table here, and as you can see, we are on a level table, zero degrees, and it lights up nice and bright green. So that is in the stock app. You have to swipe to the right, and you'll be able to get a level right on your iPhone without installing any extra apps. Now this last one is also something that is long overdue. 
through many glitches and ways around this, we can finally put new stand into a folder. Apple has not wanted you to do this for so long, but as you can see here, you can now finally place new stand into any folder. No having to hide it or beat the system. It just simply goes in. You can keep it in there or pull it out as you wish. So that's new stand in a folder, a cool little feature that I also found. So those are all the hidden features that we decided to place in this video today. If you have noticed any that I didn't show in this video that you think are pretty cool and you're running your copy of iOS 7, please feel free to leave a comment below. Again, these are the ones that I just found the most interesting, so I decided to make a video on them. If you are curious in running iOS 7 right now, as it's not yet available to the public, go ahead and head over to iosbetas.com. That's iosbetas.com, and you can sign up and begin using iOS betas today. It's not available yet to the public until the fall or later with the launch of the next iPhone, but you can begin to use yours today if you head over to iosbetas.com, get registered as a developer, and then start using iOS 7. It's a really cool software. It has lots that has been improved, and it's awesome. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. Hope you liked the video, and I'll see you in the next one.